My name is Dr. Kishore Gandhi. I am from Thomas Jefferson University Hospital in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I am a assistant professor of anesthesiology and director of regional anesthesiology at the hospital. Today I'll be talking about ultrasound guided nerve blocks of lower extremity. Some of the challenges of joint replacement are that um, patients have a lot of pain, so uh, we as anesthesiologists and hospital providers need to minimize the patient's pain. Patients also need to accelerate re rehabilitation um, to, so that patients do not have excessive scar tissue after surgery. Um, patients need to be on anti anticoagulation so that they don't develop uh, pulmonary DVTs and pulmonary embolas. And we need to local, uh, minimize local anesthetic consumption to minimize um, toxicity. And we need to avoid postoperative complications for patients. Studies have shown, uh, sp specifically this uh, by JAMA, in JAMA by uh, Dr. Munin, uh, that, that patients who are giving, given early physical therapy, regardless of their comorbidities, do better uh, and have better um, better outcomes and the the key is to control pain and to to accelerate rehabilitation um, and patients gain rapid f functional improvement if this therapy is begun in an early period during the hospital stay. Xavier Captavia also published in anesthesiology that um, that patients have better pain control are able to have faster functional recuperation uh, if they have a continuous um, nerve block or a continuous epidural infusion uh, versus a PCA uh, pain regimen. They, patients who receive these two forms of therapy are able to have better knee flexion and are able to uh, defer mobilization less than compared to PCA. Um, however, um, patients have better knee flexion on day five and discharge, however, at month one and month three, they have minimal differences. Typical nerve blocks of lower extremity that we do are the lumbar plexus block, the fascia iliaca block, the femoral nerve block. These nerve blocks are very good for uh, pain of the hip as well as the knee joint. The sciatic nerve blocks are done for anything um, below the knee uh, for foot and knees for, for foot and back of the knee surgery. Popliteal nerve blocks are an extension of the sciatic nerve block and they provide adequate analgesia of the of the foot for ankle surgery as well as uh, Achilles tendon repair. The advantages in lower extremity catheters are that patients have minimal concern for for anticoagulation. Um, patients can have utilize one leg and, and, and the surgical leg is used for uh, physical therapy. Patients do not require uh, uh, Foley's in the hospital setting when they have peripheral nerve catheters and there is mi minimal hemodynamic instability uh, compared to epidural infusions. To review some of the anatomy of the lumbar plexus, the lumbar plexus is derived from L2 to L4 of, uh, of the spinal cord. These, these nerve roots um, exit uh, uh, from the spinal cord uh, between the transverse processes of the vertebrae. They then um, uh, pro progress caudad uh, in the belly of the psoas muscle to form the terminal nerves. The lumbar plexus uh, forms the lateral cutaneous nerve, the femoral nerve, as well as the obturator nerve. Now, lumbar plexus nerve blocks uh, have been shown to provide adequate analgesia of the hip joint, uh, specifically hip arthroplasty. When you place a lumbar plexus catheter, uh, patients have a very good um, um, outcome over the four days after um, surgery. They have adequate analgesia, they have independent independence from IV analgesia, and they're able to ambulate faster than placebo groups. Lumbar plexus blocks have also been shown to 
have good outcomes in knee arthroplasty. These patients have uh, early recovery when giving lumbar plexus nerve blocks after knee surgery. Patients have um, lower morphine consumption as well as um, early ambulation on first day. When doing a lumbar plexus block, uh, patients are placed in lateral position and that's best for optimal visualization of the lumbar plexus. The ultrasound probe is often uh, placed, placed three to four centimeters from the midline um, and, and at the level of the iliac crest. Now, the ultrasound probe is placed along the longitudinal uh, sagittal uh, position. And when you are able to, to place that ultrasound, what you can actually visualize is, is your erector spinae muscle and you will see the classic trident sign. Trident sign is formed from the, the transverse process, which gives an acoustic shadowing below the transverse process. Um, you will be able to visualize the uh, psoas muscle and the lumbar uh, plexus is within the first one-third of the, the psoas muscle. Um, sometimes it is difficult to differentiate them, however, you could see a hyperechoic uh, structures uh, during the performance of this nerve block. The needle can be placed with the in-plane approach and, and approach the lumbar plexus at one level. Um, it is often uh, prudent to use a nerve stimulation technique uh, with this uh, procedure. Fascia iliaca blocks um, have been done for hip surgeries as well as knee surgeries. Um, these blocks are fascial compartment blocks. Uh, you are not specifically targeting a, a nerve. However, you are localizing a you are localizing the local anesthetic um, between the fascia lata and the fascia iliaca, uh, and those can be seen well above the at the area of the hip. And by distributing local anesthetic there, uh, the local anesthetic will spread medially and laterally to, to block the femoral nerve as well as the obturator nerve. Fascia iliaca compartment blocks have been used in the ER, uh, specifically for patients that present with uh, hip fractures. Um, to, to provide adequate analgesia to these patients, uh, um, fascia iliaca block can be easily done by emer emergency department physicians and they could provide patients with, with lower pain scores at 15 minutes, 2 hours and 8 hours after uh, presentation to the, uh, to the hospital and, and performance of the nerve block and also keeps the vitals very stable. In the classical approach, the fascia iliaca block is done um, one-third the distance from the anterior iliac spine and the, and the, and the pubic tubercle. Um, by going two centimeters at that one-third distance, you're able to actually identify the fascia, the fascia iliaca as well as the fascia lata. Um, the needle tip can be advanced, the needle can be advanced in plane and the local anesthetic can be dispersed. Femoral nerve blocks are the bread and butter of um, what anesthesiologists do uh, in the hospital setting. Uh, the femoral nerve is derived from L2 to L4, the lumbar plexus, and it, it, it precedes caudad below the inguinal ligament and divides into the anterior and posterior divisions. Uh, it enervates the quadricep muscle as well as the sartorius muscle. The femoral nerve is lateral to the femoral artery and the vein above the iliacus muscle. When scanning for the femoral nerve, uh, one can place the transducer um, of the ultrasound uh, in, the, in the area of the, the inguinal ligament. And by scanning the inguinal ligament, you could easily identify the femoral artery as well as the femoral nerve. Let's look at this diagram again. The femoral artery is here. The femoral nerve is a large hyperechoic bright structure. It's a large nerve, easy to identify. 
um, so that a, a nerve block could be done um, at that location. This is an image of a, this is a video of a continuous femoral nerve catheter that we often do uh, for post-op pain relief after knee surgeries. All catheters should be done in a sterile fashion. We typically apply a plastic drape as well as a, a sterile sleeve or the ultrasound probe. A linear probe is often uh, enough to identify the femoral nerve, different, depending on patient anatomy. The femoral nerve can be visualized here above the profundus branch of the femoral artery. A needle can be inserted in plane, and when, when stimulating the, the nerve, you could actually visualize the quadricep twitch. A catheter is then threaded, and this is a stimulating catheter, which is a different form of catheter, uh, which can still be used to localize the nerve and a bolus is given through the stimulating catheter. So how long should you keep a femoral nerve catheter after total knee replacements? Studies have shown that um, maximum benefit for a patient is 48 to 72 hours um, infusion, and that, that helps with uh, passive knee flexion up to six weeks. Um, beyond the, that, there may not be any uh, benefits uh, uh, on pain, stiffness, and functional ability. The obturator nerve uh, is usually derived, again, from the lumbar plexus. It sometimes splits high up in the obturator canal. Um, the divisions of the obturator nerve vary uh, in different patients. Uh, it, could either, it can either divide above the foramen or below the foramen. So it's really variable. Um, with patient anatomy. Uh, the obturator nerve can be localized um, between the adductor muscles. Uh, it is the first branch is the anterior branch is between the adductor longus and the, the adductor brevis. Um, this, uh, another branch is between the adductor brevis and the adductor magnus. Um, in clinical practice, uh, this may not be useful for knee surgeries because because the amount of sensory innervation to the knee joint is really variable. Uh, it's just a patch that, um, that may be given as part of a sensory innervation. Most of the, most of the adduct, obturator nerve is mostly for adduction and motor purposes. So um, for post-op pain relief, it may, not be, it may not be really valuable. The saphenous nerve is the only nerve of the, uh, of the upper extremity of the um, of the femoral nerve that innervates the lower part of the leg, and it gives sensory innervation to the medial aspect of the lower leg. The saphenous nerve can be the saphenous nerve can be blocked within the adductor canal. If you are to uh, trace the uh, the genicular artery uh, branch of the femoral artery. Uh, and trace it down to the mid-thigh level, you could actually see the sartorius muscle, the vastus medialis muscle, and an adductor longus muscle. And the, the sartorius nerve, uh, the saphenous nerve, is um, localized within that adductor canal. The sciatic nerve uh, is derived from the sacral uh, plexus and it is lumbosacral plexus, and it is derived from L4 to S3. The question is, do you really need a sciatic nerve block uh, for total knee replacement? And the answer is yes. Um, studies have shown that FAMDANG uh, in 2005 has shown that when you combine sciatic nerve blocks with femoral nerve blocks, patients are more comfortable, have less pain, and less nausea vomiting. Um, same with Ben David, who said, who demonstrated in his study that that um, that most of the patients benefit from sciatic nerve catheter catheters with good results. When doing a sciatic nerve block, um, the ultrasound probe is can be traced from 
popliteal area to the high sciatic, high sacral area. And you could actually trace the tibial nerve and the common, nerve, common perineal nerve together, which formed a sciatic nerve, which, which forms a flat appearing structure. And it's hyperacovic, um, and it could be traced all the way to the infragluteal or the subgluteal um, area. In terms of sciat in terms of catheters, which catheters are better? Again, um, patients have have better outcome um, when you use a 0.2 or 0.4 percent ripivacaine. There is little difference in outcome between the two, and the satisfaction is high. However, patients who have um, higher concentration have have more uh, motor block than lower concentration. Typically what we do is after we insert a catheter, we give a bolus, and that bolus is adequate for primary block. Patient's catheter is attached to a pump which provides a continuous infusion of local anesthetic at 8 to 12 cc's an hour, and we try to aim to provide a sensory block and avoid motor blocks. We also avoid excessive local anesthetic toxicity. Patients are monitored in the hospital setting and, uh, and nursing and patient education is important because uh, if they have an insensate limb, they're able, they're, uh, they're, they're prone to getting pos positional nerve injury. So patient education is, is indicated for these purposes. Thank you.